This is the Peter Greenwood Show, and I am sitting next to a man who I literally grew up watching. Ladies and gentlemen, on this pooky little radio show, Mr. John Delancey. How are you, John? I'm very well, thank you. It's so good to have you here. Oh, thank you. How are you enjoying Scotland? Oh, I always enjoy Scotland. I, I've, I, I've been coming here for 30 years, and it's always great. It's all, I mean, truly, it's always great. You got an amazing reaction when you walked out in front of a crowd because I was standing right in the front. Uh-huh. And I actually saw you. You looked at me and I looked at you and I was like, oh, John Delancey looked at me. <laughs> and then you went out into the crowd and everybody yeah. cheered. Does that ever get old, that feeling? No, no, of course not. And, uh, and uh, but, you know, going just back to Scotland, I, it makes me think of the first time I was here uh, with our with our young children. I, I think they were like four and six and uh, and then the night, no, I, I don't know a whole bunch of times. So we, uh, we we've always enjoyed it. So I've had a, a number of interesting experiences. I was uh, once uh, a young man came up to me who looked like he had been living really hard. Uh, he was probably around twenty five, twenty seven years old, um, and um, he came up and he said, uh, "Are you Jane's dad?" And I said, uh, yes, I am. He goes, yeah, yeah, now I know what my parents went through. That's a real experience. Yeah. I, I thought, wow, you know, he finally, I'm sure his parents were as desperate as what I played, but he couldn't see it. Uh, and he finally, through, through theater, essentially, uh, was able to see, uh, have empathy for what he had put his parents through and also to understand the level of concern that they might have been going through that he couldn't see at the time. So for him, it was a, a, a you know, kind of a transformational moment. So that's what good theater does, good writing does. How did you get involved in Breaking Bad? Oh, I just auditioned. I just auditioned. And was it, had you seen the show at that point? No, I don't. I tend not to watch very much. Um, I, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm I was very dyslexic and am in a way still, and um, so I never really made a date with a television because the TV was pulled out of the house when I was a little boy, and um, so I would go to movies, but just watching uh, on a small screen at home, I just never did that. And still don't. So a lot of things I don't see. And what was the impact? Of, I mean, you said the story of the young man who came up to you, but what was the feedback like from your fans? Um, well, people liked it. I mean, people were moved. Uh, I know that my agent called me to say, uh, we've never had this, but uh, we're getting calls from other agents and other people who are who do what we do. I mean, in other words, agents and casting directors who have said, you've got to watch your client. Uh, so, um, it was very, it was very positive. I mean, just from an acting point of view, it was positive, but I think that from an emotional point of view, it was, um, it was very effective uh, again because of the writing. Everybody loves Breaking Bad because it is a, it goes, very many different places. Right. So as an actor, it must feel freeing to get a role like that? Well, it certainly was for me because I usually play, you know, the in-your-face, aggressive, you know, lawyer, jerky businessman, uh, you know, malevolent god. Uh, I mean, I'm playing those type of of people. So in this case, I was playing somebody who, who was a victim, uh, not knowing that he was a victim, 
Uh, so there are all of these undercurrents and overcurrents and, that are going on that I am oblivious to, but that the audience can see and appreciate. And uh, and what they what the audience could see is is that oh my gosh, this is a father who's will do anything and everything to protect his daughter, but it's not going to come out. It's not going to be a happy ending. As you said, the audience knows where it's going, but in his world, he's just lost his daughter. He can't see what's happening, but it is happening all around him. And that's fantastic writing, as you said. Yeah, it's fantastic writing. Uh, and, um, and part of the job of the actor, and frankly, of the director, is to uh, try to be as simple as possible so that the audience can get in and do all of the personalizing uh, that an audience member needs to do to be able to have it affect them. I'd like to ask a little bit about Q, mm. if I may. You've been, he's been in your world for 30 years now, and he's very mischievous, some have said about him. Do you ever miss him? I have played versions of him in, I mean, understand, there are high points to that character which are Star Trek oriented. But the interior of that character is me. I mean, uh, which is to say that if you don't bring yourself, yourself to the role, then there's no particular reason why you should be playing the role as opposed to somebody else. So there are lots of elements of, in that character which are not unlike me. So, um, so as kind of silly as it may sound, I, I feel in a way that I uh, spent a career kind of playing myself with different clothes on, you know, different attitudes and different um, wearing different hats but still the essence of it is that I'm playing kind of myself. It's interesting you say that because there are a few times he does get quite vulnerable. Is it difficult to put that part of yourself out there as a performer? Um, it, it, it isn't, no, it's not difficult. I, I mean, the thing is this, is that you, you need to have a, a character where that actually works. Um, that's what was so kind of enjoyable about Breaking Bad. Um, I, I I didn't have to do a lot of spinning, and I didn't have to, you know, I, I wasn't juggling. It wasn't this, you know, ba -dum -bum 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 type of thing that Q is like. Um, I just needed to be uh, myself there, and um, uh, so um, so I I. I actually would love to play another character like that. I mean, the last big character I played, which was about a year ago, was um, uh, he was really, really in your face. I mean, really in your face. And uh, well, when I, when I uh, auditioned for Q, I was playing, um, I was doing a play uh, where I was playing the character of Roald Amundsen. Um, kind of a black, all dressed in black, this specter that is walking across the stage in this white world of, of Antarctica with uh, always speaking to Scott. Uh, you know, and so I'm, I'm used to playing those type of characters. So it was refreshing to be able to play something um, a little less um, in your face. John Delancey, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, it, it was a pleasure, and thank you for your questions.